Joseph Vaz was born to Christopher Vaz and Maria Miranda on April 21, 1651, in a quiet little village of Benalem, Goa. His father had a mysterious conviction, as he himself has recorded it, in course of time my son will achieve greatness. Joseph grew up in the love of God, he began to reach out to the backward children and poor of the village, his mother used to refer to him affectionately as, my little saint. He spent much time praying at night while his family thought he was asleep, it is said that he would escape to the parish church early in the morning and its doors would automatically open wide to welcome him. Noticing these special signs, his father helped him pursue a priestly vocation, he took him to the Jesuit College of St. Paul, where he left his mark as a diligent and devout student. For his further priestly studies he entered the Academy of St. Thomas Aquinas run by the Dominicans, he was ordained at the hands of Dom Antonio Brandau. On this occasion he wrote his famous, Letter of Captivity, on August 5, 1677 at the feet of the statue of Mary in the church of Sankal, in it he surrendered himself as a slave to Mary and decided, like her Indian yogi, to carry out his mission barefooted. He soon became the much sought after priest, confessor, preacher and friend, he had a great respect for local customs and sought to bring people closer to God by adopting them. On hearing of the need for missionaries in Sri Lanka, he felt the urge to volunteer, but the chapter of Goa turned down his application, they decided to send him to Kanara, Mangalore, instead. He was sent to assert the jurisdiction of the Portuguese Padrodo against the propaganda vicar apostolic appointed in Kanara, Joseph Vaz was given the title of Vicar Ferrain of Kanara. Knowing the political nature of the task Father Joseph was reluctant to go, yet he saw in this new posting the hand of God, on reaching Kanara he reconciled hurts, built bridges of peace, administered to the sick, the dying and to Catholics who were spiritually abandoned. Meanwhile, the squabbles of double jurisdiction between the Padrodo and the propaganda continued, Joseph Vaz sent in his resignation which was not accepted by the Archbishop of Goa, only when the Archbishop unexpectedly died did Joseph get his chance to resign, Sri Lanka was beckoning him. On 25 September 1685, Joseph, after seeking permission from his Archbishop, decided to join a newly formed community at the Church of the Holy Cross of Miracles. It was founded by Father Pascal da Costa Jeremias, a priest from Margao. He helped the community to adopt the rules of the Institute of the Oratory of St. Philip Neri, popularly called Oratorians. He was elected superior and became the real founder of the Institute in India, which rendered great service to the church in Sri Lanka. After six months he left Goa for Sri Lanka with two Portuguese priests, fellow Oratorians, and a boy named Joao. They travelled down the coast of India through Mangalore, ministering to the needy Catholic communities. On reaching Telesheri, he realized that one of his companions would not be allowed to proceed because of his fair complexion, he advised both to return to Mangalore while he proceeded with Joao on foot till they reached Tope where the Jesuits had a college, Joseph also learned Tamil. Due to the anti-Catholic sentiments of the Dutch who had occupied Sri Lanka, he was advised to put on a disguise if they wished to proceed. Father Joseph and Joao thus proceeded to Tutakor and from where they entered Sri Lanka under the disguise of coolies. The trick was effective, but it cost them great hardship, they were subjected to the indignities that were part of the day-to-day -day life of the coolies. The journey took them 20 days during which they fell sick before landing ashore in late April 1687. The Dutch Calvinists had, during their 40 years of occupation, destroyed all Portuguese forts and were bent on wiping out any trace of Catholicism from the island while at the same time imposing their own Calvinist faith. Tough laws were passed, churches were desecrated and demolished, children were forced to attend the Dutch schools in fear of destruction of their home and death. Due to this hostility, Father Joseph and Joao went about from door to door as beggars for three months. Their real motive was to look for traces of Catholicism. They were disappointed to learn that there were very few Catholics left. But with faith and determination they carried out their begging errands. Father Joseph wore a huge rosary round his neck. Soon Catholics suspected and came to know that there was a priest in their midst. They gladly yet secretly passed on the message to others. Thus began the first signs of revival of the Catholic faith, they would meet at dead of night to be catechized and to receive the sacraments. As Christmas of 1689 approached, they planned to celebrate it secretly in many places. 
Unfortunately, a traitor betrayed them and a raid was organized by Captain Van Reeder. Father Joseph escaped but men and women and children were stripped naked and thrown into jail. Seven leaders were ruthlessly murdered. Father Joseph Vaz and his faithful Joao escaped miraculously to Silale. They reached Kandy, having crossed mountains, forests, rivers and after being exposed to the dangers of robbers and wild animals along the way. Meanwhile, news of the heroic work of Father Joseph Vaz reached Lisbon and Rome and being stirred by his faith, the native oratorian order, reformed by Father Vaz was given immediate approval. But the Calvinists convinced the King of Candy that this priest was a Portuguese spy. Father Joseph and Joao were thrown into prison for five days. They were later kept under house arrest for two years. During those years, as if by the hand of God, the Kingdom of Candy suffered from severe drought. The King appealed to the Calvinist ministers, Mullers and his holy men to offer prayers for rain, but nothing happened. Father Joseph Vaz was approached. He ordered an altar to be built in the public square facing the palace and gathered the Catholic community to pray. This act of faith caused a sudden downpour of incessant rain which astonished the king and moved him to grant Father Vaz his freedom together with the full permission to preach his religion and invite others like him to Sri Lanka. Joao was therefore sent to Goa to bring new missionaries. Father Vaz also highly recommended that Joao who belonged to a low caste be ordained a priest. This was in direct contravention of a ban against those of low caste origin prevalent in Goa at that time. Meanwhile a smallpox epidemic broke out and spread over Kandy. The king and his courtiers fled. With courageous faith Father Joseph Vaz and his oratorians began attending the sick without any concern for self. The epidemic lasted a full year. After the epidemic the king returned and marveled at the good work done. When the Calvinists tried to oust the oratorians the survivors of the epidemic vouched for their integrity before the king who immediately assured them complete protection against the Dutch. More priests arrived and among them Father Jacob Gonsalves, who was set aside to master Tamil and Singhalese. He wrote volumes of devotional, biblical, dramatic and musical works that have earned him a place in the literary history of Sri Lanka. Father Joseph's work caused the Pope to instruct Cardinal Tunan, his legate for the East, to consecrate Father Joseph Vaz as the first bishop of Sri Lanka. Father Vaz stoutly declined the honor. He did not want to be associated with political power. He insisted that he did not wish to have anything political mentioned in letters addressed to him for fear that it would jeopardize the hard work of the missionaries. In 1705 while on his mission to Madhu Father Vaz rededicated a statue of Our Lady set up and venerated by the people there ever since. This place has been a pilgrim center for the Church of Sri Lanka. On returning, he and fellow pilgrims had to pass through a forest inhabited by wild elephants. One of them suddenly charged at the pilgrims. Father Vaz intercepted the beast and calmed it down. Instantly the elephant knelt at his feet while he blessed it. Worn out by his hard labors during 24 years of his expedition to Sri Lanka, Father Joseph breathed his last on 16 January 1711. The king ordered a three-day public homage and allowed the burial in the Church of Kandy as a special mark of respect. Father Joff Baz was beatified, and declared, blessed, by Pope John Paul II on 21 January 1995 in Colombo, Sri Lanka.